say to you, Stanford? Yes, come in. Wait a minute. For a radio man? Yes. Well, just follow me, please. Somebody told me to come to give it a shave. Uh, yes. May I take your coat, please? Maybe her cut too, eh? The master has been delayed. You will wait here, please. Did you send for a plumber? Yes. There seems to be something wrong with the kitchen sink. This way, please. Here. What are you doing out here? Where are you going? Oh, never mind me. Tell me about yourself. Well, this seems like all the time. You know, I couldn't imagine what it had to you. I wondered if you were angry or something. No, I couldn't figure out any reason. You decided it's, well, maybe you've gotten married no, or... No, I didn't get married. I wasn't angry with you either. I just thought that maybe... Maybe what? Oh, I don't know. This is... Maybe it was better we didn't see each other anymore. Oh, you felt that way about it? No. Oh, I can't explain. You wouldn't understand. Jimmy, it's all for you, but let's not talk about it now. I was just thinking. What? It's been two months since I've kissed you. That is a long time. what you're doing out here in this mud hole. Well, you haven't given me a chance. But I can't tell a lie, Mr. Allen. I'm going to look for a job. 
I was just allowed to go to uh, 3100 Elmhurst. And if I'm lucky, I become the social secretary to an old lady with lots of money. That's funny. I got a call to come to the same place to sell an automobile. See, that's swell. And if you sell the car and I get my job, but maybe they'll let me ride this sometime. <laughs> Listen, honey, if I sell that car, it makes me top man at the sales room. Well, that means uh, enough extra salary to, well, buy a vine cover and all that sort of thing. And, uh, well, if I should ever get married, well, I wouldn't let my wife go driving around in the mud looking for a job. Well, if you want to be top man, you better get me out of here. If you can. <laughs> position as secretary. No, there's nothing social about my call. I'm a seamstress. My name is Mrs. Reed, and I was sent to this address. But what anybody wants of me this hour of the night is more than I can tell. Who lives in this house, anyhow? Uh, the master will be here directly. Will you be seated, please? Yes. Do you, do you know what kind of a place this is? It, it could be an insane asylum, could it? Oh, I hope not. Why? I don't know. Oh, why? Oh, I don't know. But, but you called here about a position? Yeah, they told me to come at 8 o'clock for a position as a housekeeper. Do you think there's anything wrong? Oh, I don't know, but it seems awful for all these people to be called here at this hour of the night. Seems kind of crazy to me. We met before. Well, your face looks so familiar to me. Oh, 
Why, I was just thinking the same thing about you. I've seen you someplace. Yes. Uh, let's both get out of here. We can talk about it outside. I think so, too. I couldn't help overhearing what you ladies were saying. Do you realize that death may lurk around the nearest corner, ready to breathe this chilly breath into your heart? Do you realize that tomorrow's sun may never reach your sight? That one quick sweep may take us all in turkey? Are you prepared to meet the inevitable? Are you? Do you realize that your death may work a hardship on you? Do you know that a policy in my company will provide independence and comfort for your survivors? How old are you? It's none of your business. Some men. I know you. Isn't your name Brown? No, madam. My name is Smith. That's just it. That's you together. And convicted that boy of murdering John Davis. Almost a year ago, but I remember you. Of course. Well, your, your name is Grass. It's no. Mrs. Reed. Why, well, I was on that jury. That's where we met before. Oh, of course. And you, weren't you on that jury, too? Why, yes. I've just been for someone to say something about it. I thought so. I got it. I got it. Now I remember what I saw you people. I was on the jury. You remember? Tony Scavalato? Oh, of course. Uh -huh. And that the peach. I remember him, too. You know who that the man is? That's a John Davis, the man who was murdered. Oh. You remember us. We were on that jury, too. Oh, I don't God. like the looks of this thing. It couldn't be a coincidence that we all meet here tonight. Do you realize the man that we convicted is to die on the sixth Shh. month? Shh. You do. Baby. Uh, my name's Alan of the Security Motor Car Company. Yes. And uh, you are Miss Mason. Yes. What's the matter, Helen? I don't know. I got tired. Well, who is that Anne? Do you know him? Why, no. Why should I? Well, you, you seem startled. I thought that... Will you wait in the den, please, miss? the jury, too. Listen, young man, were you called here tonight? Why, yes. Who's that for you? Well, I don't know. That's just it. Nobody knows. I tell you, they called us here to do away with us. We condemned a murderer to die. This is the house of the murdered man. There's his picture. Look. station will be on the air again tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Good night, all. 
Uh, uh, that's nice, ain't it? What? Well, he was on the jury, too. Why, well, sure he was. people doing here? We were called here. We're waiting for the master of the house. The lights went out and then that happened. This man is dead. Who is he? He's the butler of the house. He is not. This is my house. I never saw this man before. Did you call us to come here at 8 o'clock? I did not. I've been out of the city. Say, I'm getting out of this place right now. I'm going to get my coat. Now, wait a moment, madam. No one can leave here just yet. Someone in this crowd has killed a man. Who it is, I don't know. But the police will have to find out. <laughs> I'll phone the police. It'll be some time before they arrive. The storm has made the roads pretty bad. So you will might as well make yourselves as comfortable as possible till they get here. These air courts. I think that young girl had something to do with it. There was something between her and the butler. Did you notice when she came in? They seemed to know each other. She acted a bit afraid of him. It's just what I thought. What I want to know is who's going to pay this for fixing the radio. I get a bit of a bill for three but dollars and fifty cents. I got a bigger bill than that coming to me, but I'm willing to leave it if they just let me get out of here. My old lady never will believe this story. She will when she sees it in the newspapers. I tell you, this whole thing has got me goofy. Here we are, all members of a murder trial jury, and now one of us is a murderer. Yeah, or a murder... Yes. The police will be here immediately. I should like to ask you a few questions. After all, this will hold me responsible for this... this affair. Will, will someone please tell me just what happened? Well, well, right. Right. Oh, no, please, wait a moment, ladies and gentlemen, one at a time. Uh, yes, well, you see, it was just like this. We came from the hall there into this room, and I went right over there by the fireplace to keep warm. I have rheumatism in wet weather. And when I was standing there, the wind blew the lights out. Then there was a shock, and someone lit the candle. 
And he was lying right there, just like he is now. You say you were standing by the fireplace? Yes. You were not. You were right over there with the rest of us. I was uh, standing over there by the stairs, and something came whizzing by me. And it was a pretty close shave. Ah, uh, you men who asked me to come and give you a shave. I'm a, a radio man. I hear that the shutter too. You woke me up. You up? Certainly. I was a city right down on this chair and I was asleep. Think. What the... Hey, what is this? If you were asleep, I was up in the attic. We were all over there together. That can be wrong. Maybe there's fingerprints on the gun. No, I examined it with the glass. The person who used this gun wore gloves. Why, Miss Mason's wearing gloves, but she didn't fire that shot. How do you know? Because she was holding my arm from the time the light went out until they came up again. She was. That was me holding your arm all the time. But I thought you said you were at the fireplace when the lights went out. Oh, well, this business got me so mixed up I don't know where I was. That young woman knew the man that was shot. There was something between them. We all noticed how startled she was when she came in. She seemed to be afraid of him. Miss Mason, do you know whose gun this is? Well, why don't you answer? It's my gun. Oh, but I didn't kill him. Honest, I didn't. He threatened to kill me, and I was afraid. Who do you mean by he? That man. He was he's my ex-husband. Well, now I guess that clears up everything. Young lady, I'm afraid the evidence is very much against you. Am I right? The case as I see it is this. A woman carries a gun because she is afraid of her ex-husband. He has threatened her. He is shot while the lights are out. Someone in this room killed him. No one present had anything against the man. No one even knew him. The young lady had a motive in that she feared him. There were no fingerprints on the gun. She wore gloves. Moreover, she has admitted the ownership of the weapon. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were members of a jury and such evidence was presented, what would you do? Well, we would convict her. Sure we would. I, I think so too. I have a confession to make, but I'm sure when you understand, you will forgive me. The young lady is innocent. Then who killed him? There has been no murder. I staged this little show with the help of Miss Mason herself. Is this your idea of a practical joke? <laughs> Wait, Jimmy, please. Please, let me finish. Tonight you have convicted Miss Mason of murder. Convicted her unofficially, it is true. But had you been members of a jury trying her for murder, it might have meant her life. Eight months ago, you were members of a real murder jury. You were trying a man for his life, accused of killing John Davis. The same evidence used against him was what you heard against Miss Mason tonight. Circumstantial evidence. You convicted that man just as you convicted this young lady. And now you know that she is innocent. The man you convicted and condemned to die goes to the gallows. And he is innocent. And when he dies, you are his murderer. I lied to you tonight. This is not my house. It is the former home of John Davis, the man who was murdered. I borrowed it with the help of my assistant over there. I am sorry that I had to resort to such means, but it was a frantic effort to save an innocent man's life, the life of a friend. I staged this little show tonight to try to prove to you all that an innocent man might be convicted by circumstances. I want you to help me save the man you condemned to hang. I only want a reprieve long enough to find the real murder of John Day. And I think I can do it. A petition signed to the governor of this state by the 12 men and women who convicted this man, I am sure, will halt the execution. 
I should I? I'm sure glad that the man on the floor is not dead. Because these lovers, they talk so good. They make you think everything is something which is a nothing. Just because they like to hang a man. I'm the first man to sign the petition. I sent him two times the petition. No harm in that. Maybe the guy ain't guilty. Anyway, anybody who's gone through the trouble you have deserves another chance. I'll sign it. All right. All right. Are you really nice to that man over there? No, of course not. I haven't a husband. Oh. Well, you can't tell. Maybe someday you'll get lucky. Quit bragging. Come on, get up. Everything's all right. Everything is okay. You know, you lay down too long, he's too flat to get tired to sleep. Well, get up. Now, wake up. Everything's all right. Get up. He's a dead! But this is serious. This is J.E. Burton. I'm at the John Davis house. Somebody cover him up. He just keeps looking right at me all. Hey, can't we move him someplace out of here? I just telephoned the police. We can't touch the body until they arrive. Coming up the road? Uh, maybe it's the police. No, 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 that's impossible. I just phoned them. Looks like a police car, all right. Someone ought to watch him. This man's in shock. 
You know who this fellow is? You found him climbing out of a window. No. I never saw him before. Uh, I am Edward, sir. The caretaker of this house. These people have no right here. Someone broke in into the house, tied me up. All uh, right, all right. We'll talk about that later. Dead, all right. Shot through the heart. My name is Burton, officer. I'm a member of the law firm of Burton and Crandall. That man was my partner, Robert Crandall. Who did the shooting? We don't know. Well, what do you mean by we? Who was here? Why, all of these people. You know, this man says he's a caretaker here. Yes. This was the home of John Davis, who was murdered about a year ago. Oh, yes, I remember. This man was mixed up in it, wasn't he? Yes. Because John Davis left him his estate. He was acquitted for lack of evidence. Is that right? Yes. Then they convicted another man. Yes, Oliver Elliott, Davis's secretary. Would you mind, sir, if I go to my room and put some clothes on? All right. Al, go upstairs with this man when he gets dressed. Are all the people that were in the house when the shooting happened here now? Oh, yes, yes, they're, they're all here. I want all you people to stay right here. If anyone tries to leave this room, they'll be arrested. I'd like to talk to you alone, if you don't mind, Mr. Burton. Certainly. Just come this way. Who are you? Just the plumber. This is my room. All right, go on in and put your clothes on. Yes. an outrage holding us all here like a lot of criminals. Oh, well, we were reacted criminals in the, in the eyes of the police. Somebody committed a murder, and it may, it may have been you, you for all we know. Ridiculous. Well, did I give this a caretaker? That's what I think. Where was this guy Burton when the shot was fired? He didn't come in until afterwards. He could have been outside of that window when it blew open. Yeah, yeah, but, but don't forget, the sh shot came from the inside. I didn't hear a shot. No, neither did I. Well, well, I thought I did. Miss Mason, earlier in the evening, you said that gun was yours. Is that true? Or is it just part of the action putting on top? Of course, that wasn't my gun. I never saw it before. Ah, I got it. I got it. I knew. A very clear, what you call a suit, suit aside. If anyone here had a motive in killing your partner, Mr. Burton? Oh, I, I don't think so. I don't think anyone here even knew him, as far as I know. Have you any ideas or suspicions? I believe the same person that killed Davis also killed Crandall, because Crandall and myself were on the verge of finding him. Well, what do you mean by that? John Davis's murderer is in jail. I'm convinced he is not. So who do you think did do anything? Well, 11 or 12 years ago, Davis was mixed up in a racket with a couple of men. The law came down on them. Davis framed his partners. They got ten years each. Davis went free. They swore that they'd get him. Apparently they did. For one week after they were released, Davis was killed. 
Sounds logical. Why wasn't that introduced as evidence of the trial? Well, I didn't know it before. I lost track of them for several months after they got out. But I've had a private detective on their trail, and his latest report says they're in town now. Oh, I see. Then if they got your partner because you two were making their trail too hot, the chances are they'll be trying to get you next, won't they? Well, they probably will. If I don't get them first. Upstairs a minute. I'll punch you right in the nose. Well, no use to waste any of my time. I've got to keep it busy. Well, I guess I'm late to get some wood before that thing goes out. I stood right outside that door, and when I came in, why, he was gone, and the window was still open. All the way out of the room. And you don't think he'd be dumb enough to go out in that rain again, do you? <laughs> Hard to tell. Like John Davis. Oh. That's not the guy I saw sneaking around here. He must have been seeing things. There's no one fooling around here. Everybody here to sit perfectly still. No matter what happens, don't move or scream. Oh, what happened? Don't ask questions now, just do as you're told. Put out those lights. Now, you get over behind that 
screen. I'm playing a hunch. If I'm not mistaken, we're going to have a visitor before long. Is that you, Burton? Yes. Thank you. Who was it? Now in the front room. Watch your step. That'll do. Light the lights, somebody. I think we've got the man we want. Take care of him. But he's a dick. He's not a detective. Come on, Bert. Come on, Bert. been shot, killed. I didn't hear a shot. Neither did anyone else. The gun that fired that shot had a silencer on it. Search him. Who's he? You'll find out. This gun has no silencer. It hasn't been fired. Headquarters? Yes. There have been two murders here tonight. Who did it? I don't know. I think this man may be able to tell you something about it. Any place we can go to question him? There's a room down the hall. Hmm. Let us stay here, Mac, and keep an eye on things. All right. This is Mr. Clark, officer. He's been doing some investigating for me. All right. I know. You 
got a match? Yeah, you bet. I've got it. Hey, what's the idea? Oh. Give me my gun. We suspected you all the time. Give me that. Oh, no, you don't. How do I know that you're a real policeman? I don't trust anybody in this place. Give me that gun. Oh, you. You got a permit to carry this? Sure I have. Let me see. What's his name? Joe Young. Now can I have a match? Why don't you admit it? You killed those two men, didn't you? No. Then why did you and Burke come to this house tonight representing yourself to be police officers? Did we say we were police officers? No, I don't think you did. Uh, just passing by, huh? You killed John Davis, didn't you? No. You and Burke are partners of Davis, weren't you? That's right. He double crossed you and sent you to jail, didn't he? Yes. And you swore you'd get him when you got out, didn't you? I never said I did. I found these letters in Davis's rooms. They say you did, and they're signed by you. So what? Why don't you come clean and save an innocent man's life? Very dramatic, Mr. Burton. But we couldn't have killed him. Burke and I were arrested two days after we left the big house. When Davis was killed, we were doing 60 days for drunk driving. Check up on that if you want to convince yourself. All right, we will. I think I'd better take a little look around the house. I was going to suggest that, officer. Keep an eye on this man and telephone the corner for me, will you? Right. Come on, Mr. Burton. Hey, Chief, that shot was fired through this screen. There's the bullet hole. Look! Well, I didn't go anywhere. What's in there? Nothing but wood. Well, I've been going out in the rain all night. between those walls. Hmm. Compressed air gun. Does that kill anyone? Strong enough to shoot through a two-inch plank. Not many of them in this country. That's the sound I heard. Yes, both times. Uh-huh. Mac, take charge of that. I'm going to see where this goes. like a trap door. What are you doing in there? I, uh, I was afraid. Who is he? He's the caretaker of this house. Well, I guess we got the man we want. Yeah, but you haven't got the man that killed John Davis. Because John Davis isn't dead. What do you mean? I mean that the man they buried as John Davis wasn't Davis at all. How do you know? Davis knew that Burke and I were going to get him as soon as we got out of prison. So he found a man that looked like him, killed him himself, and let him be buried as John Davis. 
Burke and I got suspicious, so we went out tonight and dug up the body. It wasn't Davis. That means that John Davis is still alive? Sure he's alive. I think he's right here in this house. We come here tonight looking for him and spoke to you. Well, if Davis is in this house, we're going to get him. Mac, watch that opening over there. Come on. Up. Sit down. Get over there and sit down. Quit falling around. Get out of this house. Yes, sir. Mr. Davis, I'll take the money. Why, you contemptible crook! What do you mean? I promised you half the money. I want them all. You may be helping three murders, and that will repay me for it. Well, you'll never get it. Ah. Resisting the law. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this man? What? It's John Davis. Well, we want him too. Mind if I come in and use your telephone? No, I don't mind, but I, I'm afraid you're not going to like it in here. Well, I want to call the garage. My engine's dead. Bring it in here. Be right at home. What's the matter? We've had an epidemic of murders. Never mind. I'll fix it myself. Well, I would if I were you. They probably haven't got a thing on you, but they want to ask you some questions. 
You bets have got nothing on me. Well, I guess you can all go home now, folks. I'm sorry to have wasted your evening. But if you send me bills for your services, I'll gladly mail you checks. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll go down the hall. Let me put my coat and umbrella down. You know, you might need a plumber somewhere. Believe me. Oh, uh, Mr. Allen, uh, what automobile do you sell? Why, Mr. Burton, the best on the market. Well, I was thinking of getting a new car. Suppose you meet me at my office, say, uh, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. And you be there at 9.30. We'll talk about that secretary position. All right, thank you. Oh, Mr. Burton, do you mind making my appointment first? You see, if I sell you the car, she won't need a job. Oh, well, uh, you be there at 9.30. Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> The two missing. Yes. Say, uh, don't cut it too high over the ears, will you? Your Excellency. 